Grace and peace. I am Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Bible Study, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. We are in the middle of our series on work, worship, putting work back into worship, or connecting our beliefs with our work. This is week four out of ten, and we are looking at the work of the Holy Spirit this week and how the Holy Spirit works in a way that we can model and imitate shining forth the image of God as we work. And we talked about the Holy Spirit working in us in the last video, the first video this week. The second video of this week, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and empowerment, how the Holy Spirit empowers us. And diving right in, let me start with a work parable. And just thinking about this and telling you how this idea came about, you see Jesus tells a lot of parables in his ministry. So many of those parables have something to do with work. Jesus used stories centered around work to communicate truth about God. So that's what we're looking to do at this as well. And this is a two-part uh, parable. The first part is going to be in this video. The second part of the story concludes in the third video of this week. So let's talk about Betty. Betty Baumgartner. Betty Baumgartner has been a high school technology teacher for all of her adult life. She started teaching immediately after college. When she was young, she had dreams about changing the world. She was at, uh, idealistic and naive. Now, some days she wondered if she has really accomplished anything. Those are the days that her students don't seem to be understanding the basic words that are coming out of her mouth. The days of confusion and apathy really make Mrs. Baumgartner tired. She no longer wants to change the world. Now she's hoping to just impact one student. She wants to be the difference in that one student's life. She wants to be the teacher that showed technology to someone. And it changed what they thought about the world. It changed their career path. It gave them the tools to become a productive member of society. Mrs. Baumgartner often questions her success because she can't always point to a pile of concrete objects that she has made. Her job has results that are much more intangible. At times, especially, that is at times especially hard for a teacher who teaches about technology and technological innovations. All these objects that she teaches about made a difference in the world, has she? So just looking through that story, thinking through, one, how our work quite often empowers other people, and using that story as a launching point to talk about how the Holy Spirit engages us and empowers us. So let's turn to some passages. And technically, not all these passages are in Acts, but this one from Joel is quoted in Acts. So this is all kind of centering around the beginning of Acts. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 2.4. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages, as the Spirit gave them ability for speech. And then Joel 28 through 29 from the Old Testament, but is the specific passage that is quoted in Acts. After this, I will pour out my Spirit on all humanity. Then your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams and your young men will see visions. I will even pour out my spirit on male and female slaves in those days. So looking at those three passages, I want to center on one specific question. That question is, in all of these verses, how can we tell the Holy Spirit is working? Let me flip back to the verses. Let's look at this. So, those that are being addressed in Acts 1-8 will receive power 
or in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes on them, they receive power, and then they become witnesses. You know, and 2-4, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they began to speak. And Joel, their, the Spirit is poured out on them, and then they prophesy or have dreams or see visions. So the Spirit comes on them, and then we see them do something afterwards. We know about the presence of the Holy Spirit, not because we saw the Spirit come on them, but we saw the results produced by the Spirit coming upon them. The Holy Spirit works on the inside of a human being and empowers that human being to do something, to make a change in the world. We never we usually never, I don't know if we ever, have direct access to see what the Holy Spirit is doing. We only see the results of what the Holy Spirit has done inside of a person. The Holy Spirit changes us and then therefore we go and do something. This is the empowering aspect of the work of the Holy Spirit. It happens on the inside of a human being. As that said, this is how I would describe the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as sent by God the Father through the request of Jesus the Son, invests himself in the lives of individuals, changing them so that they have the spiritual resources to perform acts of which they were otherwise incapable of. That is the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes something inside of us. The Holy Spirit uses and empowers us to make a change in the world. That is quite often like some of the ways we work. There are a lot of jobs that are that way. Let's look at how I would describe our empowering work. When we share our resources, knowledge, experience, energy with others in hope to change what they are capable of thinking or of doing, then we are working like the empowering Holy Spirit. If we consciously acknowledge this, it can produce a worshipful attitude in our own hearts as we work. If others see us working this way, then through us, they have seen a portion of the image of God. So as a minister or a teacher or someone who works with students, I quite often try to empower them to change the world. I try to change what's going on inside their heads and inside their hearts in a way that equips and enables them to do greater things than they could do if I had not been there to influence them. Now, my work is not their work. But my work on the inside of them is often measured by their work. Teachers are graded on how well their students perform. You know, there are other things. Counselors are basically working to change the insides of human beings. There's a lot of different jobs that could look this way. Um Let's let's do this for discussion, just things to think about. You can drop these in the comments below or just talk amongst um, friends around. Have you ever struggled to learn something, but then a teacher made all the difference? You were trying to figure something out by yourself, but it just wasn't working. And then a teacher came and explained it to you, and that made a huge difference in your ability to learn it. Have you ever tried to teach somebody and they were not willing to learn? How did that make you feel? Is it possible, and this is more of a rhetorical or a thinking question, is it possible to change someone who is not willing to be changed? And last question to think about, have you ever had a job where you made a lasting difference in the rest of an individual's life? What did that experience feel like? As always, there are two ways to join live Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom or these weekly wrap-ups, which you can find on YouTube and WordPress. 
I'm all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, and YouTube. Those links are in the description. I really enjoyed having this conversation with you, and I hope to continue it sometime very soon.